What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. The market is currently open, so I apologize if I talk pretty quickly as I have some live positions open right now that I may need to manage. For the most part, I wanna cover some of today's price action and as usual, we're going to take a look at some gamma exposure as well as some additional confluences for what I consider to be a couple A plus trades here for today. This is the SPY on the 15 minute time frame, and we're looking at our gamma exposure levels that were marked off at the start of the week. If you're new to gamma exposure, I suggest you check out the link to the playlist that I have in the description, as well as pay attention to the videos that I've recently released. More specifically, the video that came out yesterday, as these levels were addressed in yesterday's video. The only thing I forgot to point out actually in that video was the G flip strike, which was 545. However, that level was known to us. If we just go to my notes here and we pull up the profile so this is from august 12th so on monday at the start of the week here this is where i'm building out that gamma profile for the week and this is our gamma flip strike of 545 so i forgot to have that marked off on my chart so i just put it on the chart here for today before i started recording this video Let's jump straight into what I considered a really good buy opportunity here earlier in the morning. This is our 540 strike. So we already know it was a significant strike on the SPY. I trade the SPX options, by the way, as well as the ES and ES options, but I like to do a lot of my analysis on the SPY. A current trade in which I do have running is a broken wing butterfly right here targeting 450. So the SPX has been consolidating around the strike price for a bit, but we're now experiencing a little bit of a breakout. But I just wanted to point out a position in which I currently have running. We'll get into why I opened that trade. But for the most part, let's kind of rewind time. Let's go back to here earlier in the morning. You guys know already I've addressed in this channel so many times the break and retest. The same way we had the break of this level here, we're in positive gamma territory. That's what all this green rectangle here is signifying. It's letting us know that all the strikes around here are positive gamma. This is a negative gamma island. Once price broke out above it, it retraced to it it held we pushed higher it retraced to it again and then we ended up push higher if we get a little bit more context on this chart here and we take a look at the quant trading app script so i just switched over to my momentum based time frame which is the three minute chart if i were to turn off all of my studies and we're just looking at the clean price action i'm just going to turn back on the studies what we're looking at is the proprietary quant trading app scripts so we have the intraday script and the weekly script if i turned off the intraday script and we take the we took a look at just our weekly levels this is your standard 9 EMA, by the way, and this gray level right here is your standard VWAP that ships with pretty much any charting platform. For Quant Trading App members, you guys know this for the past few years. We've been doing this for years. It has worked exactly the same. This is exactly what Quant Trading App was built for for momentum-based traders, the break and retest. This red zone that you see on this chart here is referred to as the Quant Trading App sell zone. Whenever price breaks out of this zone early in the week, whenever it retraces to the level, we generally will get a bounce. The same thing applies if we break out of the zone and then we retrace to the zone, we will generally get a bounce. And that's what we're experiencing here. This zone on our charts is drawn out at the start of the week the script that we copy and paste is created at the start of the week so this is thinkorswim there is a trading view script that works essentially the same as the thinkorswim script so this is the trading view script and this is our thinkorview script this is copy and pasted this was created here from 5 p.m on sunday and then we just copy and paste that onto our chart and it plots these levels so these are levels we are aware of before price action gets there which means we can already anticipate what we're going to do before price gets there if price breaks out of this level when it retrace again this level was drawn out at the start of the week it means you have a lot of time to decide what you're going to do when price gets there the gamma exposure just adds additional context to this this level was on my chart at the start of the week before price got there that means when the week started and the spy was here market was pretty choppy on monday no one had any concrete idea regarding how the market was going to react to the catalyst this week we can see obviously bulls have been in control as the market has continued to gone up. It has trended up since the lows from last week. This right here is our break. This is our retest. This is our break. This is our retest. This is our breakout. This is our retest. So we already have eyes on the expectation of the market potentially bouncing at this level. It's all about building additional confluence for yourself as you're trying to increase the chances of your trade working out in your favor. This is elementary information for anyone within Quant Trading App, by the way. So if we were to head over to the Quant Chat, it's, it's great to see some of the longer term gold members identifying and establishing this. This is the Quant Trading App intraday su support. So I'm just pointing this out here. This is the two day anchor VWAP. You guys have seen this addressed many times in this video. The AG strike is this purple one here. This is the absolute gamma strike. And then we have the Quant Trading App sell zone for break and retest everything supported that dip we had earlier so everything lining up right here 
a major benefit of a lot of the QTA gold members is we're all looking at the same thing. We all have access to the same information. Our charts look, for the most part, identical to each other. So we're, so we're all able to identify this opportunity. Gamma exposure lines up with this. Price action, in a sense, lines up with this. Where is there a spike in volume? Right when we get to the intraday zone. So let's just put that back on our charts. I'm going to turn back on this study here. Press OK. Boom. Everything lines up right here. Now, getting long just because it hits this level, even with all of this multiple confluence, can be a little bit scary. So sometimes you want to buy on the backside strength. That can come once price breaks back over VWAP, and then you set your stop loss trailing below VWAP. If you're using something like an EMA, maybe it's below the EMA. Whatever your system is, everyone has their own way of trading. The point is to establish where you will have the lowest risk, where you'll have the highest reward. What all of this information is telling us is within this area here, there's a lot of opportunity to act. If you wait for price to get back up here and you set your stop loss down here, then you're giving yourself more confirmation as now you're definitely buying on the backside of strength, but you're missing out on the opportunity to potentially make a lot of gains. If you're a scalper and you're buying below VWAP, then you're probably taking your exit at VWAP. That is one style of trading. You buy once price is extended away from the intraday mean, the mean for an intraday trader can be VWAP, meaning you buy down here, you're selling here. If you're a little bit more conservative and you're buying on the side of the winners, if you're buying just as the price breaks and holds above VWAP anywhere in here and your stop loss is below VWAP, that means you're riding your momentum until you see a break of momentum. This is a breakdown of momentum right here. So you're entering here, you're exiting here. Guys, there's an infinite amount of possibilities for how one person trades. It all comes down to what is your personality? What is your style of trading? I love selling puts into areas in which there is a lot of potential support, especially when a lot of things are aligning to the same thing and they're built upon core principles that have been my identity as a trader for years. This is our analysis on the SPY, but the same thing can be applied to the SPX. Let's turn, come here, let's turn on our studies. And what do we have? We have our breakout, we have our retest, we have price pushing higher. We have our retest. A lot of confluence in this area. This purple strike right here is coming from the intraday script for QTA, letting us know that 5450 is the absolute gamma strike for Friday's expiration. That was calculated from pre-market. Just going to delete this strike here. This is something that I had left up from a one-on-one uh, -on -one session here earlier today in which the person I was talking to had sold the calls for 465. And we were discussing some options for how they may potentially manage that position. This rectangle on my chart here, I manually drew in as this is just the range in which I was expecting the markets to be choppy around. Before we actually move on to this uh, current position here, I want to rewind back to this point in time. So let's actually put up my main dashboard and we take a look at some of the market internals. So right here, as the SPY is down here, what do we see on the ADD? The ADD at the same time came down to this level, which is the zero level. It never went negative. The zero level is a significant strike for the ADD. If it opens all the way up here and it ends up selling all the way off, this can potentially lead to some sort of a bounce in the market, which it did today. And we can see at the same time, the SPY was at all these levels of multiple confluence the add was also at zero and it did not break that is a good sign what do we have on the tick at the same time right about right here 10 30 a.m eastern time the tick was at this exhaustion strike and it ended up bouncing whenever it gets that stretched we usually get some sort of a reversal same thing the tick came all the way down here later in the day what do we see the selling in a sense stalls out it works to the upside too. So our tick is showing us potential support. Our ADD is showing us potential support. We have all of this convergence of multiple things from quant trading app to gamma exposure to the two day anchor view app, all telling us this is an inflection point. This is an area in which we should act. When price is in no man's land, this is where we take our foot off the gas. There's not much of a significant edge, so there isn't really much to do anything there. Our gamma exposure at the time, so let's take a look here. This is 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. This is our SPY. This is just about the current SPY price, and we are coming into this level right here in which all of the positive gamma turns negative. So in this area here is essentially our transition area, which can act as a support and resistance area. Earlier in the day, we do see their significant interest at 545. There's a decent amount of volume right here. There's almost 100,000 volume. Again, this is one hour after the market opens. This is our highest positive gamma strike. Overall, the SPY at this point is in a net positive environment. A lot of this can tell us, hey, if the SPY can hold over 42, we're probably heading up to 45. We have a decent amount of support right here, just where all this gamma starts ticking up pretty high. All of this can provide some sort of support. 
market sells off to here we end up bouncing we end up going up to here let's take a look at it from the spx perspective this is 10 30 a.m eastern time we have a decent amount of support here at 425 we have some support here at 415 and then we have a really hard support down here at 400. let's pull up the spx make it full screen the gamma exposure is like a three-dimensional view to the levels in which we see in our chart. This is two-dimensional. We don't know how deep or how strong of a support these strike prices are, but we know their significance right here. So this is our 425. So I'm going to just draw this right here. Here's 425. We know this is a strong gamma support level, but we can also see it in price action. How strong or how deep is that level? This is what this is telling us. This is pretty powerful of a strike when price action was at this level earlier here today at 1030. Price could not close below this level on a 15 minute time frame. I can make it exact here. Press OK. There we go. We see it pretty clearly. So now for the afternoon session, market goes up to where it's expected to go. This is the equivalent of the SPY hitting 545 right up here, just about the uh, high of day. We end up retracing. As we retrace, this is when I start taking a look at some additional measures. So if we head over now to our QTA SPX data, Later in the day, I'm deciding where do I think the market's going to be and what do we see? We see a ton of gamma still around this strike here. So this is our profile. This is later in the day here. A lot of gamma right here. So here's the 450. There's not much reasons to think we're going to go much lower than 425. So the same strike from earlier here today. So if I'm looking for some sort of a range in which I think the market is going to want to consolidate around for a bit, the strike price that's going to catch my eye is 450. On top of that, we have the QTA graph right here. Open this up in full screen. And what do we have? We have the power strike aligning with the absolute gamma strike. So we have 450. We have 450. We see it on our gamma chart. It's a pretty significant strike. The thought process for me, there isn't really much of a reason to think we're going to break all of this potential demand for the day. We know the significance of 425, which is right around here. We're coming back down to this neutral strike. My thought process is, hey, we're probably just going to chop around this range from here to here. So the higher day, I don't really think or don't know at this point that we're going past the higher day. I don't really see much reasons to think we're going much lower. So I decided to design a broken wing butterfly for myself. So let me just head over to this first profile. It's a trade in which the risk to the downside right here is $1.65, and that's what you guys see right here. So I paid $165 for one lot of this. It's a debit of $165. The only risk was if we did break the high of day. It was structured again, so you guys see right here, the high of day or the break even on this trade at expiration. The plan is to hold this until expiration, so until the market closes. We can see right here is 463. We head over to the XPX. That's pretty much right around the high of day right here. So 463 is why it was designed that way. If the market pins right around that 460 strike, then it ends up being about an 8x return or so, so a little over $1,200 in terms of a max profit. If the market decided to just consolidate around here for a bit, then you guys can see how this trade ends up working out. So that's something that I wanted to bring you to you guys' attention. So this is just another example of how I wanted to show you guys the different styles of trading. One can go long here earlier in the day, buy some calls or sell some puts and be completely directional, and then look to capitalize on some time decay if things look pretty confusing from both sides. And why I would say things look pretty confusing as I close all of this is just because as I look at this and I see and I see reasons for price to cool off, but I see a very dominant strike here. I could I can see a decent amount of put volume. I can see a decent amount of call volume. However, there's a lot more call volume, but price is now below a strike price that if it cannot get back above, the expectation would be it's just going to chop around it. If it can get above it and then the momentum can continue, I don't really see much of a reason to think it's going to go much higher at this point in time because there aren't any other really dominant strikes other than 465 which is right around the high of day so the expectation is that i'm just going to create a spread for myself in which i can benefit off of price action just being choppy around this area for a bit and the results of that trade is what we're seeing here now hopefully the market ends up closing around here and end up with a really nice win but that's neither here nor there again when i open it the plan was to let it expire so there's not much i'm going to do with it if i'm i'm trading around it with the es i still have a broken wing butterfly that i showed you guys yesterday that's doing pretty well that expires on friday with no upside risk so there are other positions in which i have running but as always these videos aren't specifically about just the trades in which i take and there's not enough time to go over every single thing in the market i'm just trying to keep you guys in the loop expose you guys to a different way of approaching the market sharing some information and providing a little bit of insight regarding how another person might look at the markets in this example here we're talking about myself
Guys, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Like it, share it if you learned something, and stay tuned for the next one. Take care.